Have you ever come across this symbol before? Have you ever noticed that the rock formations surrounding the nail looks very similar to the sustainer's boxy magic? Since patch 2.4 and the release of Economia and the Chasm, we've seen this symbol on both the Helios light bulb at a distance and from the Black Serpent Soldiers from the Abyss Order. But in the chasm within the main chamber of the Upside Down City, we see this symbol embedded on the pedestal where the Magic Stone is located. This means that the Abyss Order and the Old Civilization have the same or at least similar technologies. Speaking of Old Civilizations and Worlds, the Seven Nations is the civilization currently existing in Teyvat. But more than 6,000 years ago, the rubble of leftover unknown structures and scattered ruins of what is now home to numerous tribes of hilly churls was once home to a race united under a single banner and was guided by a single god. This old kingdom never had a king or a queen. They never had guardian gods like archons or godlike beings to protect them either. They had but one and only existing deity and this one deity was Fanes. However, this single kingdom was subjected to bear witness to a war between two very powerful gods. The result of the war we don't know yet, but parts of this civilization fell apart and was either submerged in the deep water, buried under the crumbling soil, or plunged into the depths of the abyss. And anyone on the surface was left to face the raw and unhinged power of the two gods' wrath in what was known as the Second Heavenly War. What remains after this war, you ask? You can find out by simply wandering into the ruins where the hilly churls are known to make camp. These ruins are, or would be, the remnants of what was once known as the Old World, and especially in the more hilly churl concentrated areas like Dadaupa Gorge and the Thousand Winds Temple. In our first hours of Genshin Impact, the first we've ever known of a destroyed kingdom is from Conria, being destroyed by Celestia around the same time the Cataclysm occurred. Along with that, Dainsleaf once again ups and leaves after such a heavy event happens in the chasm. What the fuck, Dainsleaf? But here's all we know about the Abyss Order and Conria so far. The first we've known of Conria is that it was subjected to Celestia's rule and was punished for reasons unknown. The Great Sinner Gold, who was a great alchemist at the time, unleashed abyssal creatures and let them loose all over Teyvat. These two events happened around 500 years ago. Whether or not one or the other happened first, we don't know yet. The Abyss Order today are the remaining people of the destroyed kingdom of Conria. And the only canon person we know who was from Conria and served within it is Dainsleaf who was also known as the Twilight Sword. At the end of our first journey with Dainsleaf, we find out that our sibling has sided with the Abyss Order. And the last we saw from both of them was going through a portal. The second time we meet, we find out that portals the Abyss Order uses is originally from the Abyss Order only. Even Dainsleaf doesn't really know how it works. The only thing he knows is that portals of the Abyss Order isn't made as an A to B trip, rather an A to N trip, with N being the place that the user chooses. Hence why Dainsleaf can't follow through the Abyss portals so easily. Next, the Abyss Order manipulates elements without using visions. Speculations lead to them using chants and words when using elements. You can see the acts of chanting from the Abyss Mages, Heralds, and Lectors, with the Odd Ducklings being the Black Serpent Knights, which I think have elements integrated into their equipment rather than the person. As to how they were able to do this, we still don't know. The Abyss, as well as Dane's Leaf, wields a magic that we can say is original to Conria, something people call Abyss Magic, or in more recent theories, Force Magic, as well as other speculated names. We know Conria has similarities to Enkanamiya, which is a part of the Old World, meaning Conria most likely also came from a part of the Old World's cities way back from more than 6,000 years ago. Not only is Dane's Leaf part of the Royal Guard of Conria, he was also the commanding officer of basically all the Black Serpent members. Being known as the Twilight Sword, he used to command the shadowy husks that we see right now. And one of the underlings that we know of is Halfdan or Halvadan, which is this guy who apparently had a fleeting moment of exposure within the game. Hilly Churls were once the people of Conria, and if I were to make a guess here, they were also part of the Old World from more than 6,000 years ago. 
They wear a mask so that they can't see their reflections in the water because they loathe their appearances so much that they'd rather cover it up. The Healy Churls, even though cursed, still prefer to die a peaceful death, hence why they wanted to go to the chasm, at which point they have lost all their energy. The Healy Churls go to the chasm city areas and especially near the main chamber because they feel like it's close to home. Currently stated by Dainsleeve, there is no cure for the curse laid upon the people of their kingdom. Trying to remove the curse even by 1% is futile. Other than that, Dainsleeve is the only person who knows how the curse works since he's had the curse but didn't lose his memory or fell to erosion. Maybe it's on that mask of his and whatever else he did but we don't know for sure. Finally, there's a flower that blooms in the kingdom of Conria called Intevat, known for not wilting and hardening when taken out of the kingdom of Conria. Only when placed on its home soil will it finally wilt and die. You can also see this flower in the very first few trailers of Genshin Impact. We will be reunited. And that's all we have for Conria and the Abyss Order so far. If I missed something, do tell me in the comments below and be sure to read the comments as well if I did miss something. Now another kingdom you might be familiar with which is also related to the old world, is Enkanomiya. I say Enkanomiya now because its name was only taken after they had fell. The original name for this city was Byaku Yakoku, which means Land of White Night slash Midnight Sun. See, this ruined city, submerged underneath Watatsumi, was a part of the lost world thousands and thousands of years ago. This section of the Great Kingdom fell into the deep water where they were shrouded in pitch black darkness, surrounded by deadly waters, and of which was teeming with the offspring of the great dragon lords, the Bathysmal bishops, who were once the rulers of Tevat before even fiends came to it. Here they had to adapt to the darkness, overcome the bishops, and find a way out of the deep water. Within 10 years, they created light with the wisdom of the god of time. Easteroth, along with finding a path up to the surface. To their surprise, it seemed that they were stopped by fanes saying that the primordial one placed a ban to prevent them from returning. So they assumed that fanes defeated the second god, or so they might think. Years after that emerged a new foe for the humans, which is greed and corruption. For an unnumbered amount of years, Enkanomiya had undergone coup d'etats and heinous plots to preserve senile dynasties. The corrupt elders came up with a messed up strategy to use children as kings and quote unquote sacrificing them to the sun before the children could become capable of self-thinking. Until one day, a young king decided to search for a new deity, journeying into the caverns within Enkanomiya, and found the great serpent, Orobashi, which of course became their new god. Their problems however didn't end there. At some point after Enkanomiya became the Orobashi's people, the Orobashi brought them up to the surface and created a new home for themselves called Watatsumi. What the giant serpent did not know was that Enkanomiya possessed a forbidden book which recorded the events and the accounts of the old world or old civilization. This book was known as Before the Sun and Moon. And upon reading this book, the gods of Celestia today sentenced Orobashi to sacrifice itself if he wanted to save Watatsumi for its sins. The Orobashi attacked Yashiori Island and fell to the Electro Archons Muso Hitachi. And the rest is everything us travelers did in game. Now for the newest and most recent city, if we can call it that, first and foremost, yes, the city in the chasm is currently assumed and nearly canonized to be part of the old world. Similar to Enkanomiya before falling, the chasm, if its people survived, would have made a separate name for itself and would also come looking for a way out. Dainzif also mentions that the chasm's design isn't from the abyss, but from a more ancient kingdom. What interests me even more is that if you look into the main chamber, you can see this symbol of a sun, which is the same symbol that you see on the black serpent flag bearers, the wind cutter's crest, the defender's crest, and the line breaker's lance. Not only that, even the hilly churls from different regions also bear the similar symbol of a sun. Although crude and simple, it still has the circle and the eight spikes or crowns around it. Not to mention the chasm being treated as a haven for the older hilly churls. Along with that, black serpent knights that protect the hilly churls as well. Another thing I want to talk about is the absolute scale of this upside down kingdom inside of the chasm. 
If you compare cities like Mondstadt, Liwe, and Inazuma to places like Ankanomiya and the crumbly upside-down city in the chasm, you would notice right away the huge scale of these mega cities and how they would look like when they're in their heyday. Even if we combine the current three cities, it would still be smaller than the chasm or Ankanomiya's city-covered areas. The halls, guard towers, ramparts, and palaces would be even bigger than any structure built in Teyvat today. The ruins you see scattered and covered by trees in throughout the land would be replaced with stone and brick. I'd imagine the size of the cities we have in real life today, where you walk outside and you see nothing but road and concrete. Lastly, for some anomalies in the chasm, we have the Skyfrost Nail found inside its deepest corner. So have you ever noticed that the rock formations surrounding the nail looks very similar to the sustainer's boxy magic? This is all just speculation of course, but the formation of the rocks could be from the fallen star and the aura it would possess being able to form these type of rocks. Or maybe the rock formations came from the frost nail itself once it fell into the chasm's upside down city. The Skyfrost nail in the chasm is also showing an aura of cubes around it, as well as a barrier around it resembling squares or something otherworldly, almost digital if I may say. However, we still don't know what the Skyfrost nail is doing here, and we've yet to find out from the next patch. So with all that said, we've finally reached the end of the video. I hope you guys understood this little summary video about the old world and everything related to it. I especially enjoyed this because we can finally say that Kanria and Ankanomiya, as well as the Chasm, were all from the same origin. And not only that, we also unearthed some bits of theory as to where the next story might lead us to. In regards to how wide the theories are going to be, I'd say anything is up for grabs at this point. Now before I go, I would like to say I currently have a Twitch channel and am streaming streaming a bunch of variety content depending on what suits my fancy. So do check out my Twitch and if you want to interact and chat or maybe theorize with me while streaming, come watch some of my streams and follow my Twitch. As always, hit the like button and comment below what you think of the newest story quest and how it's going to continue on. Lastly, subscribe and hit the bell icon if you enjoyed and would like to see more of my content. We'll end it here for now and I'll see you guys in the next video, yeah? Bye!